Welcome to the State of Human Design. It is July 17th, 2022. I'm, I'm joined by my guest, Michael Steinbe Steinbeck Litvin. Should I just redo this whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> doesn't matter. No, okay, it's fine. <laughs> and we have Jenny off screen. Hi. Who's uh, going to be presenting some cool stuff that, that she's been looking at. Um, but yeah, we have, uh, we're just a little follow up from last time. We're going to be kind of looking at some of the recent topics in human design, uh, the one I want to start with was the question that we addressed last time, best and worst relationships in human design. And I almost always had the same party line, you know, I'm a desire person, so I lock into these party lines, kind of like how Rob would lock into strategy and authority and lock into these sound bites. And the, the party line for me was all about respect for each other and so on. And it's still pretty true. It's still pretty true because I do believe when you fully understand, I won't say fully even, but even just when we start to grasp the great mystery that is reincarnation mm -hmm. and fractal lines and how that works, we start to realize that the G center and the magnetic monopole is actually guiding us to find our fractal family and that mm -hmm. each of us is kind of thrown, you know, Heidegger was right. We're each thrown into the world, thrown into weird, chaotic situations mm -hmm. where we have to find our way back mm -hmm. to the fractal family, right. which is not, of course, Heidegger now, but this is kind of what he, this is the missing piece that mm -hmm. he didn't know, but mm -hmm. he maybe intimated at times, mm -hmm. was that there is this guidance, and which is love. As Peirce put it, the great mm -hmm. American pragmatist philosopher Charles Sanders Peirce, mm -hmm. love is metaphysical gravity. Cool. That's amazing. That makes so, that's very G center. How G center yeah. is that? Yeah, exactly. So, well, so I I actually have a viewer question that relates to that. If you want to say, I would love it. it. I would love to hear the question. Um. So there was just a a thread going on on Twitter about having G center defined by a love channel versus a directional channel. Because if G center is defined, you usually have a consistent sense of both. But does that feel differently to you if you've got one of the sphinx? Basically, channels what is the difference being a sphinx or a cross of service? Right. Or a cross of love. I mean, cross of love. Mm -hmm. Cross of service contains two of those. Just mm -hmm. like th there's a lot of channel. Uh, there's a lot of incarnation crosses that will have two of the four of the sphinx or love. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the sphinx are the four directional gates, which is so funny. People wonder why. People are always, you know, quizzical about it. They look at what, you know, Sphinx. What mm. is this? What does Sphinx mean? Well, that's Ra's shorthand for direction, for pointing you in a direction. Mm. So the Sphinx, maybe for Ra at a mystical, metaphysical level, is the thing that, you know, even the the Egyptian Sphinx in some mm -hmm. sense and its riddles and its mysteries. Mm -hmm. And when you look at these gates and you start to see, and they're about masks and mysteries. This is not the four ways. Mm. The four ways are the four ways to approach the Sphinx, mm. or to retreat from the Sphinx, or mm -hmm. to return to the Sphinx, or however it is. You know, in cool. that case. But um, but those are the four gates before the Sphinx. The, mm. the exact lead up to the cross of wow. the Sphinx is the cross of the four ways and oh, they're the four final gates of each quarter right good point oh that's super interesting so yeah it is very different being a sphinx versus being uh i mean i'm half love right i have half of the love gates i'm the left angle i'm one of the left angles of love mm. so you take you know there's only half as many left angles as right angles because you take the right angles and then you take two of the right angles, the opposition, and you switch to the left angle. You switch the other two. Mm. That's the left angle. Mm -hmm. Then you get back to a right angle. So there's twice as many right angles. That what, what, you know, what I mean by that is um, the way it works is that the cross of healing, the one I'm on, is the left angle of the cross of the vessel of love only during the spring and fall equinoxes. Mm, the point. summer and winter solstices had a different left angle. See what I'm yeah. saying? Mm -hmm. From that same four... Those same it's called four gates else. of the right yeah. angle. Well, yeah, because it has so it's four different gates. Right, right. Yeah. And so each name is for a unique set of four gates. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's really incredible when, when you get to see the variation of 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 that and how incredible mm -hmm. that is. And, and I, I love just as a side note on incarnation cross, the most incarnation crosses, mm -hmm. left angle, right angle, juxtaposition. Which one's the most? Uh, right angle, of course. Wait, which well, one are there most of? So funny, yeah, exactly. See, that's the question. Uh, the most, the most people born into, the most common, uh -huh. the most frequently born into, and the most with the variations and so on. Oh, but if you actually think of the most names, oh, it's juxtaposition. Funny. Oh, and the, it's most the most differentiated. The most differentiated. There's two different true, most. True, it's such a yeah. funny switch. That's super interesting. 
but, but so yeah so are there differences what you're saying like yeah you're saying and, and not even with incarnation cross necessarily but just if that's well the so and so i'm someone who has a, a vessel i'm a vessel incarnation right uh i mean not even incarnation cross like you're saying life force energy exactly my yeah. 2946 is vessel because it's off the 46 mm -hmm. just like john cole has 2551 yeah. so he's another vessel but you are a sphinx because mm -hmm. you have 731 right so right. 731 being part of the trident part of neptune's trident mm -hmm. in the g center um that's yeah so you're absolutely right these are very very different i mean to be a sphinx versus to be a vessel yeah there's absolutely differences like um a good example would be our mutual friend johnny who's a 515 mm -hmm. and how that works as a vessel about the love how important that love is for him mm -hmm. versus the 731 that mm -hmm. leadership mm -hmm. it's a little bit different for you now can you say that because the thing is, is it's still activating it. The leader, it's like, I guess maybe you could say that one side of it's more important than the other. Mm -hmm. Because for the love gate, like thinking of Johnny, he's a 515. What he loves is probably most important, but he also wants to go to get it. He loves to travel. He mm -hmm. loves to look for the things he loves. He loves to find things. Mm -hmm. But the finding is less important than the having, if you, mm -hmm. if you will. Or the being in that mm. in that sense, maybe we could say. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there are commonalities because I've seen all sorts of differences in knowing people born on the cross of masks. I mean, I would say don't limit the research only to the life force channels. Also, look at the incarnation crosses mm -hmm. that are born. You know, born on the, the gates right. of Neptune's trident. One, two. You know, I know a. Uh, uh, one three on gate one. Mm, that's interesting. interesting one. She's yeah. A, yeah, she's a one one. Yeah. So we, what, what's that like? Yeah. You know, that's a direction person. Yeah. Now she's doing what she loves. She's a jazz singer. Uh, you know, loves her work, but she also does travel a lot and she is looking a lot. And it also raises the question of what is it about direction versus love? What do we even mean by these differences? Mm. And when you really get into global cycle analysis, you find that there's four keys of love and there's four keys of direction. Mm -hmm. And that really helps. And each one has an internalization and an externalization mm. theme. Right? They each have internalization and externalization. So it's mm. really incredible. And we're, we're also moving, um, you know, we're, it's really, I, I won't go into the whole global cycles, but I'll just say to really, it's like, this is a great topic. And yeah, start tracking people you know, like I can put you in the direction category. Mm -hmm. Then there'll be people that have neither, then there'll be people that have both, right? right? You're gonna find people that are hybrids. Or there could be people that are cross of the Sphinx, but whose g center definition comes from a vessel of love channel. You know, they could have all sure. four Sphinx gates, but the thing that defines the g center is a love. Yeah, and in that case, you know, if you look at the incarnation cross as really how the life purpose is fulfilled through the outer authority on the personality mm. side and through the inner authority on the design side, mm. and you look at it in kind of a simple way of like, these are the two odd bedfellows that are inhabiting the same right. body, basically, mm -hmm. and they have to get along and work together. But ultimately, the personality has to surrender to the design right. and to allow, to allow the design to kind of make its own decisions and operate freely without... Uh, cracking the whip of the superego and all that stuff. Um, you know, if you look at it like that and bring it back to that, and then you realize that Sun-Earth is so important there, mm -hmm. and that that fundamental polarity of the Sun-Earth is going to be so important for the, the really the two, the two um, consciousnesses inside mm -hmm. the same form, you could say, the personality and the design. Um, and, and that's a really beautiful way to start. And then from there you go, okay, what's the life force energy? Okay, now this person also has... Um, some love activation, right? Mm -hmm. So this person also is going to have thirty-four ten. Mm. Okay, so they have love gates. So mm. They have they have love gate activation there. Well, that's going to be a requirement for them that they're going to have to love their behavior and stand mm. up for their behavior mm. and fight against the conditioning of the undefined solar plexus to hide their true behavior mm. and their freakishness and to fight against the undefined ego need to prove how they can behave normally mm. when they really should just be behaving in a way that's special to them and so on. And they're mm. going to have all of these unique challenges associated with that 3410, mm -hmm. that life force energy. But then at the same time, they're, they're going to be a human signpost because anybody born on the Sphinx gates is a human signpost right. here to oh, really direct good, others and show point, them yeah. ways that they can do it and meant to be examples in different ways. Mm -hmm. And they're meant to be, this is the way you can live if you want. And this mm -hmm. is the way you can go in your life if you want. Cool. And this is... 
the way you can predict the future, and this is the way you can understand the past. Mm-hmm. Because we're, we're, like, there's only four real directions. Mm. Yeah, there's yeah. only four directions. Yeah. There's gate one, gate two, and then there's the future and the past. Yeah, totally. So yours is the future. So your role is to get to help people and say, well, here's how you can understand the future. Right, yeah. Here's and how then, things are tended. Right? Yeah. And then the yeah. other collective leaderships, the, the uh, 33 13s, mm-hmm. they're over there, or, you know, 1333, they're over there going... Here's how you can uh, make sense of the past. Mm-hmm. I know all these images happened. Here, there's a story that puts yeah, the images totally. together in a nice narrative. Here's how we got to this point. Here's yeah. how we got here. And so they're both helping you in that way mm. to understand. And so, yeah, I mean, I think this is a really great question, very astute. It makes me so happy to hear people are really coming with, like, academic-level questions about yeah. human design, mm-hmm. if I can. Totally. All right, well, I think this is a great time to transition over to Jenny's... Um, Little discussion a little bit. So, I also agree. That was a really good question. All right. So I have to turn profile to profile. <laughs> the, this is an exciting new technique you brought us. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Wait. I have to be a little forward. There we go. All right. Cool. Well, when Mike uh, came over earlier, I was kind of briefing a little bit on some things I was doing this morning, and it brought up some good questions and topics for this. Um, And so basically what I was so excited to show him was, let's see if I can do this. Yeah, just there focus on go. one of them. Perfect. There we go. A little slide. You can see this is the line, color, and tone on the design and personality side. And it just has all the slots for Sun, Earth, and North Node, South Node. And so this relates to the Steve Rhodes stuff. This, um, this is like a map for the this like Steve Rhodes style analysis but it really goes beyond that like it's for human design too and um, so this is the one that um, I put my own um, okay let's see here we're gonna go zoom in and bingo nice. okay there so you can is. see here on my mind my personality it's second line second color third tone um, design, fourth line, third color, second town. And so then my nodes are down there. And look at those nice shapes you've drawn around them. Right, yeah, like I thought that was kind of an interesting thing. And I, I had these uh, notes, what I am, internal, external, what I am attracted to. And so typically the nodes are like, you know, the storyline, the environment, the life you're in. And the sun, earth is like who you are, navigating all that. And so what you see here is I'm pretty left. The only right thing is my fourth line design body. And then on um, the nodes, I'm attracted to right. The only things that are left are third line and first color design. Mm. So just kind of interesting. Um... Another thing that I thought was interesting is this idea of kind of getting misdirected and into what you're attracted to, mm. like rather than kind of in being empowered and, and, and being who you are, like me, in this case, would get lost in feeling, mm. would get lost in, in, in not, um, we have some friends, um, specifically double respect, and he gets seemingly lost in his double success notes. Oh, interesting. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, I have a comment on that. Yeah. Just from off screen. So here's some more for you too. Oh, thanks. So my comment is just, you know, this is kind of a new... I remember hearing Ross say not to get lost in the notes. Oh, But funny. the notes are still activators. Mm. But they may not be activating your life force energy. They may not be part of a definition mm. that is part of a channel. Mm. 
So they may just be these dormant potentials. Mm. And so it's just interesting to think about. And um, Steve Rhodes is the one who says it's what we're attracted to in others, but also what we are attracted to in ourselves or mm. strive to in ourselves. Oh, yeah. So we can kind of berate ourselves for not being enough what mm. the nodes are. Oh, and this seems cool. to yeah. support what Ra said about not getting lost in the nodes, not getting lost in the criticism mm. and not being enough what your nodes are. Yep. Wow, that's really good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So. Totally. Okay. And that's um, pretty compatible with how nodes are used in Western astrology, right? In, or in evolutionary astrology, that it's like growth points or whatever. That it's like what you're growing into at, at cost at, with different... Well, yeah, and I wonder if the difference would be also that with Western astrology, with EA and stuff, even though I like EA, mm -hmm. I find a lot of EA is actually highly compatible with human design. Mm -hmm. However, I know top EA people like Jason Hawley, mm -hmm. who are like not... But anyway... Um, you know, not not up with human design, right? So there is a difference. <laughs> yeah. There is a difference. Yeah. And one of the differences, I think, is that they could see it as the striving towards learning your life lessons of this life, and you're going through your karma and kind of this very normative trajectory towards the north node from the south node. Mm. Ross says that the north and south node are. So he agrees with EA. Mm. They are pinpoints like of the first half of life is south node, the second mm. half is north node. Mm. Yeah. And he says they're more like accents, kind of like how you see sun earth. Ah. And they're both ever present, and one is simply the foundation of the other. Mm. And there is a trajectory from one to the other. Mm -hmm. So these people do have different, you know, it, like I'm a 12 11. If somebody's in 11 12, mm. that is, if they're nine and a quarter years from me, they're gonna be. We're gonna be passing each other. Oh, cool. they're going yeah, to the yeah. area that I'm leaving. Nice. So, so there are these nodal movements. That's really cool. Um, but I think in terms of like, don't be scenery. Like almost if you think about when Rob would talk about going to the Great Furniture Show, mm. that was right. what he called it. And, uh, the so Great like, Furniture Show. People uh, around the world. Cool. Yeah, you know? true. And it's like that's people who identify with their nodes. Oh, I see. I am mm. my nodes. Mm. I am my nodes. Can Can you show that again, just one more time? I want to see the. Yeah, so your nodes, you're drawn to third and fifth lines, and first and fourth lines, and fifth and sixth tone. And then the other part of it is you're drawn to the binaries, right? So like, like you can be drawn to third and fourth colors because you have fourth color. Yep. And you can be drawn so to, I cover all the binaries. And you can be drawn to first and second color, Yeah. but you're not drawn to fifth or sixth color. Right? You don't have any fifth or sixth color. No. So you don't like those high resilience. Anyway, I don't mean to, yeah. to take over. Please go on. Please. Okay, all right. Um, well, doing that kind of led me to thinking about the journey from left to right and, you know, how um, it's the past to the future. It's where we came from to where we're going in terms of, like, the seventh center to the ninth center, the left, you know, being those qualities that are more... Um, you know, of our history hmm. and we're moving towards something that's more um, evolutionary, like with the solar plexus and the ego is the other one, right? The new, it's the solar plexus and ego that are the new ones, right? Oh, since we've been nine centered? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, definitely the solar plexus. If, do you want me to comment on it? Well, I mean, uh, is it accurate? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I can just take a little... Sorry, I'll jump in for a second. All right. So, um, I'll take... <laughs> No, I really want to. I, I have some. I, I have some questions. Yeah, these are some ones. really interesting ones. I, I, yeah, I mean, okay. So anyway, the the ego is really um, kind of up for debate because what happens is when you look at the seven centered being, you find a lot. You find that it has the same head, ajna, throat. It has the same root. It has the same sacral, hmm. and then the G center, the ego, the spleen. And but the spleen the is the most plexus. prehistoric. Mm -hmm. Well, I know, but those four break out of the two mm -hmm. major ones of oh, the seven oh, centers. Yeah. So okay, they have a hybrid ego G center, oh, I see. and they have that a hybrid a spleen something mm. else yeah. that we don't have. And the gotcha. thing is, what Ra said was that the spleen becomes a major center in order to fight off all of the new viruses right. mm -hmm. because we need a stronger spleen to keep yeah. this massive database. If you took a cave person and dropped them in Times Square, they would drop dead right. because they couldn't handle all the viruses yeah, just yeah. on the street. Yeah. So we needed the spleen to develop and become a major center. When mm -hmm. it used to be a minor center, it was not one of the seven centers. Wow. But, but you are right that the ego, like when, when we go to sleep, we lose access to our ego. 
mm-hmm. for instance. Mm-hmm. We become five centered, mm-hmm. and it's mm-hmm. it's not hard. Like on one hand, we can imagine the seven centered was very ego driven, but on the other hand, like the ego is something different for them. Like the ego oh, yeah. is closer to the spirit. Right. Like the ego and the G were almost mm-hmm. united in some right. way and had not yet differentiated. Mm-hmm. So a topic for a different day. Yeah. Anyway, I'm yeah. loving this. By the way, keep going. I'm eating it all up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it brings up a lot of um, interesting things to talk about. I mean, just thinking about, like, the, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, left to right, and how it's the splenic binary, ajna binary, solar plexus, that ties with success to respect to feeling. So, like, looking at that in history is, like, success and survival and... Um, the instinctual, you know, like making sure that like you're, you know, coast is clear, mm-hmm. um, more strategic, mm-hmm. and yeah, on the right side, you know, the more solar plexus of feeling, receptive nature, um, you know, innocence being the motivation and acceptance being the um, perspective. It's just really cool to look at, I think. And the two questions that I was curious about what you, you had to say was. Um, Okay, like, I'm curious about how it shows up in history. I kind of mentioned a few things, but then, like, what do you think about the pain points um, we're encountering as we're seeing things develop? And, you know, there's kind of, like, those friction points of, like, you know, maybe some... Because you're quad left. Mm. Do you feel as though there are any areas that are, you know, maybe more of a challenge for you as we enter or continually enter into more of a solar plexus? sort of 2027 you know on a mundane level there's the challenge of just seeming like a normie or a cop to people Mm -hmm. being left in in a world that's becoming increasingly right in bohemian bohemian circles Mm -hmm. I'm less trusted because I'm like I've got automatic credit (laughs) in the straight world you know Uh, yeah It's like left privilege. Yeah, so I benefit from a lot of left privilege in places I don't even care to be in, and then I've got some, uh, whatever the opposite of privilege is, in more creative avant-garde spaces. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Some distrust. Well, yeah. Um, but I don't know. It's like we're here to, to midwife the, the development of the solar plexus into an awareness center, right? Like that's what this whole move towards rightness is about, and that that thing none of us will ever know you know that that thing that has the solar plexus as an awareness center won't be a human at all so we really are this like interstitial species and they're kind of what rightness means to us kind of isn't really a terminal point you know the terminal point is something that we'll never reach so it's probably there i mean as as right as as a human can get and as right as we make the world like if we do before our extinction develop a world that's like more accommodating to rightness um Mm -hmm. i feel like we'll still always kind of be at odds with it Mm -hmm. because we're not really meant to fully realize it yeah yeah absolutely i agree with that that's really that's really interesting i mean even thinking about those like future like that are far past our um you know life expectancy um like you know thoughts of the um Aaron, you know and i mean it's inconceivable you know yeah. i <laughs> i i heard some some uh someone say this recently like on a podcast somewhere it was just a question of like you know if someone told you a name of a color that you hadn't seen before oh yeah and then like can you picture it and it's like no you can't yeah. picture it it is it. like that totally <laughs> you like know that. So it's like, yeah, the Aaron is a little interesting. But, um, yeah, I, I feel like <clears throat> some of the, the pain points I've seen is, like, you know, probably the generations that are, like, parents, like, baby boomer generations. Um, I feel like some are kind of adapting, mm, you know? Cool. Um, but... But I think there was, like, such heavy conditioning, um, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s, you know, I mean, th- that whole half a century mm. um, with the television mm. and, you know, just narratives that are kind of being around <laughs> that are very, like, yeah. left center. They're very, like, respect, too, like, Ajna and respect. Uh-huh. And, um, 
I, it seems. I was realizing rewatching um, a little bit of that uh, Adam Curtis documentary, Century of the Self, you know, that series? No. Um, that's sort of about, in a way, it's about the discovery of um, feeling tone. Mm. of um that people want to feel good and the first episode of the docuseries is about um edward bernays freud's nephew who invents public relations in new york oh wow so he's the first ever guy to use that term and is the first person to really uh, intentionally sell an image to people and 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 what obviously you know all of advertising kind of comes from that point yeah the commodification of a vibe right (laughs) of of a feeling good yes of a a rightness yes we're taking rightness and we're attaching it to like images and signifiers and objects and commodities oh my gosh that's so interesting i love that and then i was also reading this book about romanticism and that you know that came right after the um movement into the ninth centered being and they are very much um discovering the solar plexus discovering rightness or whatever yeah um and also the idea that people have their own feelings that they have private feelings. yeah because there's also is that interesting re- yeah then there's that interesting relationship between abstract experiential circuitry and individual circuitry mm-hmm. that they kind of support each other so yeah. and so it's almost like through using solar plexus and abstract experiential they were able to reinvigorate individual circuitry as well yeah huh that's awesome and uh when you were like talking about that it kind of brought up just um some people not feeling like like they fit in and like the mental um game yeah the mental game (laughs) the distortions like the whole thing um and we're seeing so much of that right now you know Mm -hmm. like there's such a need um it seems for for people needing that mental health outlet, you know, mm. and not enough mental health, phys- um, like not, not physicians, but just like therapists. Mm. I've heard that there's a shortage. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And yet the, supposedly the people that most need therapy are the, the splenic tonal binary people, right? So the old fashioned people are mm. the ones that need therapy the most. Oh, that's true. Funny. Yeah. Oh. It is really true. The binary at the color level. Oh, but it still is. Yeah, the, the yeah. earliest digestive regimens, the earliest. It's, right. the, yeah. it's the cave people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Um, someone on Twitter today made the really good point about the um, about on the determination side, just the 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 simplicity of those first two color diets and how like um, concrete because you know you're you're coding the Maya into yourself when you're eating, and that's like how determination works, right? And those first two. Um, colors are so much about very simple and whole foods yeah. you know so there it, you can see how like we're all taking things in intimately when we're putting that matter into our bodies through following determination or whatever but when the that's um but when that food is like so basic or whatever that must be for a digestive system that takes things in more deeply yeah. which is why they retain trauma or whatever well you know what i mean wow yeah yeah Oh my gosh, there's like, yeah, way more sensitivity. Because um, that's the advantage of being low resilience yes. or whatever, it's having good memory. Yeah. Right? It's like retaining things means retaining things. It means retaining trauma, but it also means like retaining strategy, ancestral memory, right. all that splenic stuff. Right, totally. So keeping things simple and pure. Mm. That's so cool. Well, um, yeah, that kind of concludes, I think, my section. Um, Jonah, do you want to get back in here? Yeah, that was all wonderful. Awesome. I <laughs> loved it. I was just listening from the Thank you all. Take a couple notes. So that was really good. I hope you'll continue presenting findings with us soon. I would love um, that. I just love the way that's visually displayed. Like, that seems like such an epiphany, like having Thanks. those those three lines and getting the shape out of them when you have yeah, them Yeah, I'm, I'm making copies. Cool. So people can, uh, or maybe I'll put... Have Jenna put a version up online. Yeah, no, we should put copies in the um, in the totes. I can't believe no one's done that yet. It makes so much sense. Well, there are. Um, Ra did. He loved graphic design programs, and he would show down to base level, and he would show it as where they're nested. Well, he would just show lines, zigzags. Oh, cool. So he would show That's a chain, and the chain oh, is nice. like zoop, zoop, zoop. But the really interesting thing would be. Um, 
to have it on a web interface where you can see um, the binaries as well. Mm. So it's just more clear to see what... I mean, just as a little side note, and then I, I think we, we should kind of wrap up this one after this. I have a few couple of comments I want to mm. talk about, though, first. But um, so, yeah, as far as the binaries, I've been starting to see the triangle, like even right before this, we were kind of laughing about how human design shows you how it's all fractal lines, so you get versions of the same story uh, again yeah. and again and again. So the story you get of the return of the divine feminine, for instance, is the story of the return of rightness, mm -hmm. which we haven't had since prehistory. Right. And the return of uh, all of these kinds of themes that, that come with that, and the holism, and the, the great turning that was talked about by um, a couple authors in the, in the you know, 80s towards holistic worldview. And even a lot of the like Daniel Pinchbeck style return to the indigenous worldviews and so on mm -hmm. can also be seen at, because those are nested in, in rightness, right, right variable yeah. in pre, pre homo sapiens ways of being. Because the homo sapiens really, I mean, not all of them, of course, some of them are, are, are you know, rooted in different traditions and we have mm -hmm. to be careful not to homogenize. But anyway, um, we were just talking about kind of, just laughing about how, you know, you really get these keys, like the, the triangle, for instance. When I was coming up with the talk for the, hmm. f for the donor um, booklet for the conference this year, uh, or I actually have a little essay in there, and I needed a, a triangle graphic. Hmm. And I was using the same graphic to show splenic, ajna, solar plexus, and then showing how those different binaries worked at different hmm. levels. Hmm. And we kind of realized, like, that is the triangle. Mm -hmm. Like, you know how people, conspiracy theorists are always like, Oh, it's it's the you know Illuminati. Yeah. It's the I, I, no, that's the triangle. Yeah. The triangle is spleen, ashna, solar plexus. Mm -hmm. Like, and then the, we were laughing about the the G. There's always a G for the Freemasons. Oh yeah. And I was laughing how that's the G center. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because the Freemasons got their information from the same place Ra got his. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the yeah. Same. They talked to the same voice. You know what I mean? Right. Same crystal bundle. They just were able to get it at that level and they mm -hmm. probably forgot and lost it because it's a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy. Mm -hmm. So we know the actual G they're talking about because they're told at different levels, oh, it's God or right. oh, it's geometry uh, yeah. or oh, it's gnosis, you know, spelled with a G. Kind well, of you're kind of saying it is geometry too. You know? <laughs> it is, I guess it is geometry. Okay, got me, got me, dead to rights, dead to rights. This one, this one's quick, he's a quick on the draw here. You gotta watch it. Okay, so comment on your selling rightness. Huh? You oh, talked about yeah, selling yeah. rightness. Mm -hmm. So I had a comment on that. Mm. Um, funny because it reminds me of what we were just talking about with the nodes. Don't mm. identify with oh, the nodes. Yeah, the nodes yeah. are the most pure, in co pure conditioning field, the mm. unfiltered conditioning field. Mm. The only place where we receive conditioning where it's not actually a, there's no... It's not instantiated. There's like no glandular like... center. There's no like, I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe the nodes, I don't, I don't think they do though. Like, mm. I guess gates have association. So if the nodes activate a gate, then that gate is associated with particular glandular centers oh, yeah. in production. Mm. But it's not like, and it's not that the planets have associations directly either. I mean, we can't get that literal as saying, you know, Mars is the reddishness in the skin. I mean, that, ah, that, that's yeah. a little bit of a, well, a overly seven literal seven-centered yeah. version of it. But at the same time, there are these correlations. And I guess what I'm trying to say is the nodes, when you were talking about selling rightness, I was like, maybe this is what Ra means when he says, don't, don't get swept away in the nodes because the nodes are kind of pointing us where we're supposed to go according mm -hmm. to the program. Mm -hmm. But so are so is the program at a macro mm. level pointing us towards rightness mm -hmm. and programming a sort of watered down version of rightness for mm -hmm. the masses, right. which is couch potato culture. Oh yeah. It binge is watching, complete yeah. loss, yeah, and binge watching and complete loss of agency and complete loss of all these so it, you know and it's mood funny. Boards. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, lifestyle stuff. Okay, so selling rightness, that was definitely part of it. And then color one and two, uh, more basic. That was something that I just wanted to mention that when you start seeing the binaries as primary mm -hmm. and the division of between the two as two different variations on the theme. Mm -hmm. So instead of seeing, because I always think of color two needs regular eat the same food. Mm -hmm. Color one needs basic ingredients. Mm -hmm. Well also maybe the same food mm -hmm. maybe familiarity yes. is part of it in both cases definitely because the familiarity and the routine but we don't tell the first colors eat the same thing every day the same way we tell the second colors eat the same thing every day so you, you right. see what i'm saying so yeah. maybe we should maybe right. we or not tell them that they should do that mentally but tell them hey you know this is kind of how your dietary regimen is just, just yeah. another funny synchronicity and again something i saw on twitter today was um a person who has um uh, second color determination and does the alternating thing of taking apart their each piece of their burrito and eating it piece by piece 
Because aren't alternating yeah. people famous for doing that? Like in childhood or whatever, these are the kids. Oh that yeah, will well they'll, their... they'll separate out. Yeah, the beans and they'll separate. No, I mean it, it is true. Yeah, I think maybe being able to see the ingredients more clearly and. But then you got second yeah. color people doing this too, apparently. Well, probably because they're trying to simplify the taste of it. Because mm -hmm. with a complex taste, I mean, that's the funny thing. And yeah, I, I, cave people need therapy. That's what I said off the screen. Weird, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sorry. Like I, I feel bad saying that, because everybody should benefit from care from therapy, but. It's just more like, who is therapy actually? Who does it benefit the right. most? You know, it's funny. High resilience people, it would benefit everyone else if they went to therapy, if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> that's my joke for the day. Okay. Uh, well, thank you, everyone, for watching. I think this is a good... Oh, you any, any party no, shots? No, I think we're great. great. Yeah. We're, we're, we did wonderful. That was a really good, uh, really good one today. And we have a lot more in store next time. But thank you all for watching. And uh, from Mike and myself here in Santa Fe... Uh, keep loving yourself and living your design. So.